Hey guys, back here to another video. This time I want to talk about the advantages of having a smaller sensor camera. I know the big rage is full frame, full frame. I have nothing against full frame, I have a full frame right here. But there are some advantages of having a smaller sensor camera. And I guess the... If you notice, the biggest advantage of course is size. That's why they're able to fit a pretty decent quality camera inside a lot of your smartphones. It's a tiny, tiny sensor, and they're, you know it takes pretty good pictures, especially in you know regular daylight. I guess they start to fail in low light, but that's another discussion. Um, and then it's like a happy medium. You have the smaller, tiny, tiny sensors of the smartphones, and then you have the one, one and two over three sensors that you find in a lot of the compact point and shoots, like the Canon Digital Elf series, the Nikon Coolpix, some of them. And then you move up to slightly larger, the like the Canon G16 or the S120, which is used as a slightly larger one and one over seven, I believe. And then, then you have the one-inch sensor, like the Nikon V, I think the um, some of the Olymp no, that's a Micro Four, the um, Sony RX100, and then the RX10, of course, is my favorite all-around camera right now. And then you go up to the medium, the Micro Four Thirds, which is like the Panasonic GH4s and some of the Olympuses. And then you get, well, there's one between, I guess, the Canon G1X Mark II that uses a slightly larger sensor than the uh, one inch, but just smaller than a Micro Four Thirds. Then you go up to the APS-C sensors, which is the, the regular digital SLR, kind of like the mid-range ones. This little uh, Ricoh GR here, believe it or not, also uses a... DSLR size sensor, this is the APS-C, and then you go up to the full frame. So what are the advantages of having a smaller sensor? Obviously the size is one thing, it's going to be a lot smaller package. And the other thing that's really not talked about much is the fact that it's going to have a better aperture, kind of the depth of field and the aperture range equivalent, and let me explain. So I touched on it on my uh, Sony RX10 video. So on the Sony RX10 here, this has a equivalent aperture, has a um, zoom range of 24 to 200 at f 2.8 all the way through. So at 50 millimeter 2.8, it's going to be the same as this is my full frame Nikon D600 with a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. But if I set it to 2.8, both of these cameras, and I'll show you in the slide here, kind of show you an example taken with the, uh, actually with the camera I'm shooting now, the Panasonic FZ200, which is a small sensor camera, believe it or not, but I like it for making videos. Um, that, when I compare that one to the full frame D600 and the Sony Cybershot RX10. So in the slide here, you can see that the bike seat, taken out pretty much the same distance, about arm's length away, at f2.8. Now you see the smaller sensor fz200. You can see the seats in focus and you can pretty much see the background. It's not tack sharp but you can kind of see it. it's still not too badly out of focus. Then you move up to the Sony RX10, you see the seat in focus and then you see the background starting to blur out a little more. And then you see the D600 full frame, seats in focus and the background is totally you know blurred out you get the nice bokeh action so that's where the large full frame sensor is going to do a better job of blurring your background out like that throwing a, throwing your background out of focus to kind of help you isolate the foreground subject subject in the background blur they call it bokeh it's kind of i guess beautiful blur or whatever now with the with the small f smaller sensor you're not going to get that but with the advantage of the smaller sensor is you're going to get a better near to far focus with the same light entering the camera. So let me explain. With the F, with the uh, Sony RX10 at 2.8 and the D600 set at 2.8, they're both going to get the same amount of light hitting the sensor. Now the equivalent of that would be on this one inch sensor would be an F7.6. So the 2.8 is really a 7.6. You're thinking, wait a minute, 7.6, that's pretty dark. How can, how can I have the same amount of light entering it? 
you have the same amount of light because the sensor is smaller, the lens is smaller, the aperture range is smaller, or the uh, diameter, it's going to be equivalent, it's going to be matched. However, 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 because of the size of the sensor, it, it is a, a equivalent a depth of field equivalent, that's what I should call it. It's the depth of field equivalent of a 7.6. So if I were to take the same shot, the at 2.8 on the Sony RX10 and then set this uh, aperture to 7.6 or f8, it's going to have the same depth of field. Now, the full frame sensor is going to be the image is going to be a lot darker if it's on manual mode because I'm actually stopping down to 7.6. But the the uh, near to far focus will be the same in terms of the overall image clarity of near to far sharpness. It's not really talked about much, but I find that that is, when I was doing this test for, you know, showing the equivalency of the 2.8 and the bokeh, I found out that, hey, you know what? The smaller sensor actually yields more depth of field. So if you want more things in focus in low light and you want to use like a larger aperture, smaller sensor wins there. However, you know, we're not talking about a you know, low noise performance of the sensor itself, but the actual ability to use f2.8 and still get a pretty deep depth of field. So if you're, let's say you're taking a picture of people sitting in a, on, a, on a row of benches, low light. This camera, f2.8, will get more of those people in focus than the full frame sensor at f2.8. You have to stop down to 7.6 to get the same equivalent sharpness from near to far on the smaller sensor. Oops, that's not too confusing. But yeah, so, and then here, here's the chart I made that shows you the equivalents or the sizes of the different sensors. As you can see, the very top, the one and one, uh, two over three is pretty tiny. And then we go all the way down to the full frame, which dwarfs the rest of them. And because it's a larger surface area, it needs a larger lens. It needs a large, physically larger and more glass to, to accommodate the same amount of light entering it in a smaller camera. That's why the smaller cameras are more compact because of the the, uh, the diameter of the lens and just the image circle is a lot smaller so they don't need to have a bigger lens. But the aperture, the overall near to sharp, near to far is going to be a lot sharper or greater than a full frame. You don't hear that talk about much but yeah so there you go guys. Um, if you want near to far sharpness and a compact body with with pretty good low light, get a uh, one inch sensor camera or even you know even a uh, micro four thirds I guess. So there you have it, guys. Um, advantages of a small sensor: it's, it's you're gonna get more depth of field in the same aperture. Okay. Um, see you next time, guys. Thanks.